again early in the morning to this beautiful, uh, beautiful day. Uh, my name is Harry, this is Ben, and we will talk about Marconics, the human upgrade, and we'll talk about many different aspects of it, um, the ascension, um, this moving from 3D life and, and uh, body into a fifth dimensional body, and um, the new spiritual paradigms and, and things in that area, okay? And we'll leave room at the end for questions if you have any, okay? So allow us to, to uh, progress uh, naturally. So uh, we'll have just been started then. All right, so this really all began on December 21st, 2012. Uh, this is commonly referred to as the Ascension Day. Um, I'm sure everyone in here is familiar with that day. Uh, this day actually marked the end of one stage of consciousness <coughs> and the beginning of another. And uh, the catalyst for these changes were a number of galactic alignments that occurred on the Ascension Day. So um, one of them being the procession of the equinoxes. So uh, we moved out of the age of Pisces and into the age of Aquarius. And so the age of Pisces was an age of monotheism. That's where we saw the rise of organized religions. So this age was really characterized by a search for money, power, and control. And now we're into the age of Aquarius, which is an age of enlightenment. So you know, now we're searching for personal freedom and spiritual mastery. So that alone is like a huge thing for human consciousness. But um, there was also a number of cycles that concluded on the Ascension Day that put our um, solar system into a very auspicious place within uh, the galaxy. So the same way that our Earth revolves around the sun, our solar system actually revolves around the center of the galaxy. So on the Ascension Day, um, we moved into this part of the galaxy known as the Photon Belt. Um, and the Photon Belt is this like donut of dense um, photonic energy. So it's a very high vibrational energy, and our solar system moved into this uh, photon belt, and so we're being bathed in this high vibrational energy, which is the catalyst for all these changes that we're experiencing, uh, not only in our bodies, but the Earth itself is evolving, as well as our consciousness. So we hear this term a lot, you know, the ascension. Um, it's being thrown around the spiritual community. Um, but what exactly is ascension? All right, so um, when we think about ascension, we, we all, based on the word, of course, it's ascending up, it's moving upwards to a next level. And for us, in this uh, point in, in our human evolution, we are moving not only with ourselves, because it happens in the past, or when we die and we move on to, to, uh, to our, our spiritual realm, so we actually move up to higher dimensions within ourselves. And then we come back to the third dimension, back on Earth, to another incarnation if we choose to. Um, but this time, we're doing it differently. This time, it happens along with the Earth. We are still ascending with our bodies. So this is a completely different experience. We're not just leaving our body here and moving uh, easily through, through uh, as we are as consciousness and soul to higher dimensions. We actually are taking the body with us. So in this process, as we think about how, what does it mean on the earthly uh, um, level, on, and on, the, as a, on an individual level, how it affects us, it comes into very different uh, elements. Because first of all, we need to move our bodies as well move from uh, uh, the third dimension to fifth dimensional bodies. Um, and, and in this process of doing so, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of symptoms that take place. We feel like a lot of people feel uh, uh, what's now it's termed uh, ascension symptoms. And, and it, it comes in all different ways. Um, it's rather feeling really, really nice high of energy sometimes and then feeling a really dumb, like you know, very, very low. And in the process, we also um, release a lot of our you know, karmic weight, you can say, that is kept in our cellular body, kept in our energetic body around us. Um, so a lot of this process is, is um, something I hear a lot of it from my clients, is they deal with uh, elements that they thought they had completely healed and resolved in this life. And suddenly it comes right back up. And kind of, as, as if gonna, for the last kind of swoop to really have the last part of your wisdom and learning from what it is. And, and moving in that direction. But it feels sometimes you suddenly like get dumped into a place. You're like, wow, I haven't been in this place. I thought I was done with this. So, yeah, nods in the head. Yeah, it's, it's familiar, I know. I've just been through a, a couple months ago. I was like, wow, this is, uh, uh, so it's, it happens, it happens. And a lot of <coughs> other, other um, symptoms that come up is um, either nausea, headaches, migraines, a lot of uh, uh, tinnitus, ringing in the ears. I had that for months. Yeah, you had that too. Years. Years, Not yeah, much. yeah. Vertigo. Yeah. Oh, vertigo. Yeah, that that. <coughs> so a lot of different things uh, that happen as as their body is shifting its frequency 
and start to move from the organic base to the crystalline base uh, body. Um, so a lot of us, we feel it, we know what it is, but uh, most importantly, in this stage, people say, like, well, what can I do about it? What is my role in this? What is in this whole ascension as we, again, move all of us together with the Earth into the next level? And it's really, uh, uh, we are interconnected in this. It's not like uh, we can do it. I mean, humanity or groups of, of people have done, have done it in the past, have ascended uh, independently uh, from other societies by themselves. However, again, it wasn't done with the entire population or, or a very large population and the entire Earth into the fifth dimensional level. So it is, this process is quite, um, quite unique. And uh, if you think about uh, how our, our history has, has been taking place, we've progressed so much uh, in the levels of consciousness um, into this place. And if you think about even like you know, thousands of years ago, obviously there's a big di difference in change, as Ben was mentioning. Uh, even hundreds of years ago, a, a big difference in what the consciousness of humanity was. And even just a few decades ago, um, it is a big difference, big difference in how people thought and, and operated to the way they operate today. So this next move in the ascension, in the level of consciousness, is, is uh, unique and, and very crucial in knowing that you have a role and every one of us can take action and take and do something about it. And that's really uh, what, is, what is unique about the message of Marconics as well, is that you can take an, an action that is, is based on, on uh, knowing what to do, what's the purpose, and what is your role in the ascension. And each and every one is the biggest thing you can take from this is, is knowing that your role is to hold your highest vibration that you can, you can uh, um, take with and, and hold within your life. And doing it through many different things, the joy of, of uh, and dumping up all this junk, as we just mentioned, karmic junk, and all the baggage from this life and other lives. Um, but uh, it's really important to know that moving from this level of uh, just consciousness as we, it is now, it, it's important to move on and, and uh, allow, allow more, more space within yourself to do that. And it's important to become, and, and I like to use this metaphor of, of, of uh, as if there's a grid around the earth, this kind of, this is a, there is a grid around the earth that is, um, every one of us is, is, is a point in that matrix of, of uh, the grid of, of light that we, are, we have around the earth, as humanity creates around the earth. And if you think about it, I like the metaphor of um, like an electrical grid, like you know, our, our supply, electrical uh, energy supply. <clears throat> and from just be moving and being just a user of electricity, as if you just threw a whole bunch of solar panels on your roof. And when you are moving and raising your frequency, you're suddenly becoming a, a power source and a, a generator of energy, not just a user of energy or just a, no, a, a neutral part of it. You are becoming a generator. You're becoming an active participant in it. And the best way to do it is, is moving and raising your frequency as high as you can. And with Marconics, this is accelerated tremendously. So I'm going to have Ben talk a little more about the move from a 3D to a 5D body and, and beyond. And uh, one thing to keep in mind with this ascension process is what's happening here on Earth has never happened in the universe before. You know, uh, entire civilizations have ascended, planets have ascended, but never has there been a situation where a planet ascends at the same time that its inhabitants ascend. Uh, so this is causing like a ripple effect throughout the entire um, dimensional structure because all the other higher dimensional levels of consciousness are ascending as well. So. Um, you know, at, as we've known it up until this point with the energetic anatomy, you know, we all know about the chakras and the meridian system and the nadis and subtle energy bodies. Um, but what we're realizing now is that this is just the energetic anatomy of the fourth dimensional body. And we're moving into the fifth dimensional light body. So there's a whole new set of uh, etheric structures that belong to the fifth dimensional light body. So we have like a axial circulatory system an axiotonal grid system, um, there's spin points, there's a whole expanded chakra system, um, including galactic chakras, which like really connect us back into the galaxy itself. So uh, we're being called to activate these new structures um, to sort of reconnect to our fifth dimensional light body. Uh, and I think one of the important uh, parts of this is the shape of the chakras. So as we've known them up until this point, chakras are cone-shaped vortices, right? Uh, they're shaped like a cone because they're pinched off and capped in the fourth dimension to limit the amount of light and 
information we can receive in order to sustain this collective illusion. Mm -hmm. So uh, the actual, the natural shape of a chakra is like a sphere. Um, so when we return our chakras back to their spherical nature, what happens is they lay down this uh, grid structure which connects us back into uh, the axiotonal grid system of our fifth dimensional light body. So I know there's a lot of big terms here, but it's uh, good to start to become familiar with these terms because they're gonna start popping up more and more, especially if you do like any kind of energy or healing work um, because we're being called to activate these. So um, when this grid structure is laid down, uh, we're like reconnected back into uh, the galaxy and the universe itself, so we're able to download information from our over soul and higher self levels into our physical body. And this is part of what's causing these uh, physical changes within us. So um, this axiotonal grid system, it's part of our fifth dimensional light body. It connects us into the grid system of the earth, so the telluric and crystalline grids of the earth. And then it also connects us back into the um, axiotonal grid system of the galaxy and the universe. So boom, we're being plugged back into source, basically. Um, but along with these um, changes that are occurring with the physical body, uh, there's also a change in consciousness that's occurring. So we're going from third dimensional consciousness to fifth dimensional consciousness. So third dimensional consciousness was one of separation and duality, and we're moving into a heart-centered unity consciousness, which is, you know, based off of love and wisdom. So, uh, you know, in this fifth dimensional consciousness, we understand ourselves to be one with source and interconnected with all beings and all things. And so um, what's beginning to sort of ripple throughout the spiritual community is we're starting to see that there's a new spiritual paradigm that's emerging. Um, we're starting to see that the old spiritual paradigm we've been functioning under for the past couple of thousand years, it's not quite working anymore and it's not getting us to where we need to go within this ascension process. Um, so we need something new. You know, something, not something new just to have, you know, another new thing to do, but we need something new that is able to access these galactic energies that are now available to us because we're in this photon belt that I mentioned earlier. We also need something new that's addressing this new spiritual paradigm, and we need something new that um, is really encompassing this uh, new consciousness that we're evolving into, and that something new is Marconics, right? So, come on, explain Marconics. So let me tell you a little more about Marconics. Um, it really is, it's officially named Marconics the Human Upgrade because it really is um, the only energy work that I, I know that is really designed to help in the ascension process. Um, uh, there's other modalities uh, in that have existed in the past, like you know, Reiki has been around for about 100 and some years. Um, and, but those frequencies that Marconics uh, hold are just brand new. As, as Ben was mentioning, it's, it's just been available to the Earth only since 2012. So it is important to realize that, that this level of frequency has not been here in the past. So those other um, uh, modalities that existed before do not serve to move us to the next level and, and in the same level. Um, and uh, let me tell you one thing that is also very unique about Marconics, which I enjoy a lot and uh, I can share a little more about this from my experience, uh, um, when you do the, the higher self integrations, this is a beautiful experience. It's like, it's like birthing someone into, into their body. Again, getting bigger parts of your higher self uh, inhabit the body. So that's, again, what, this is what's unique about this ascension is that we embody the entire, uh, more and more of our consciousness, more and more of our awareness uh, and, and soul uh, in the body. So it, it is a beautiful thing, and, and we just had, uh, we actually just met six months ago at, a, at, a, at the workshop at the Marconics teaching that I had in my center up in Prescott. Um, and it was just amazing to, first of all, we have been uh, a lot of, we experienced a lot of uh, higher self integration, which were pretty phenomenal. Um, and then we were assisted others in, in receiving it. And it feels beautiful to have that level of energy flow through you into that person. And, and it's just, you can see them, uh, you can see that they're lit up. It's, it's beautiful. So it's a very unique experience to do that. And the, the higher self integrations are part of the Marconics work, and it's something that's unique to Marconics work that I've never seen in any other energy work. And I've been doing energy modalities for like maybe 12 years, and I know like 
at least a dozen different energy modalities, and, and none of them do this. Do this, this work, which is very, again, very unique. And it helps you to, again, uh, um, thin that veil between you and, and those higher realms within yourself. Um, and I'll give the example of, for me, uh, and again, the past six months I've received numerous upgrades. And we also went to the teaching uh, <coughs> level. There's only 11 teachers in the world, and, and two, two of them are, are right here um, that are allowed to teach this now. Uh, so it's, it's, it, was, it was amazing to experience that and to feel uh, the difference. And I'll give you an example. I've done some um, automatic writing, kind of channeling, uh, for the past few, uh, few years. And um, I always had to have cross the note, that, that veil between myself and, and, uh, and um, higher, higher aspects of myself. And now, after all these integrations and upgrades, I have no more veil. I simply just, just sit down and start writing. It's just, it's just there. It is. So you are moving yourself, your, your level of frequency, your level of consciousness is just that much higher than it would have been before. And I think that the, the, I think the greatest benefit is, is to uh, attend and experience one of those classes uh, yourself. And I think what's beautiful about it is not only that you, you can do it, again, you're taking that active role in the ascension, knowing that you are doing, you are actually doing something about it uh, for yourself, for your, for, your, for your friends and loved ones. I mean, it, it felt good to, uh, to do a recal this is level three work, um, to do recalibrations of my, my closest family members. And, and it just feels good, because you know they are just gonna be, their fifth dimensional body is, is set and created with all the, the grid and energy grid around the body. And it's, uh, it was beautiful. We saw uh, an example of someone from, from here, from Phoenix, um, and uh, just to uh, uh, expand on what Ben was saying on the, again, the conical shape um, chakra uh, that you have at the centers compared to the, the sphere one, they had a beautiful example of, of uh, they had like a, a pendulum uh, someone laid, laid on, on, on a table with a pendulum over her, you know, her body. When it was about this much, it, it kind of starts spinning. Like it usually, if everybody has done energy work here, you can see that. Once she's finished her recalibration, and which again is what we what mentioned, like turning into a spherical shape of each of our chakras, um, she was, they had to stand on a, on, on a chair and go up above, and it was spinning like crazy, like close to the ceiling. I mean, the chakras were that wide open in a, in a beautiful, large way. It was, uh, it's beautiful to see that, because because when they were like close to her, it didn't spin at all, because it was in the middle of the chakra. It just didn't even respond that. So they had to go way up to, to see it actually spinning. And that was kind of a, a, a validation yeah. that that work, it really is happening. It really is uh, being created. And, and they kept doing that throughout the weekend, like um, whenever someone had their chakras uncapped, you know, before they had it uncapped, they do the pendulum, and then afterwards, and every time, like, you know, it's that validation, because you'd have to go way up there to find the extent of where the, the chakra field is, yeah. So it, it's, it's a beautiful uh, thing. So um, do you have any guys have any questions? You want to come join me in the picture? Yes? You were talking about moving to a fifth dimensional body of existence. What do you see about those in the past um, as far as do we reunite with that world, or do they go on to their own? Well, when someone passes, that is their ascension, so they're ascending to those levels. So when we, you know, ascend to those levels, it will be reconnected with them in our consciousness because they're already there. So they, um, you know, especially the people who are passing lately, it's because they can't take their physical bodies with them to the next level. So that's their way of ascending. They choose to depart. Yeah. Before the ascension, because they know it, they, it's you know it's going to be the easier form to just leave, uh, because they're not built for that ascension. So you see a lot of people. Would their dilating. experience afterwards be any different than ours? If we're taking our body with us, would we be able to go back to 3D if there's anything in 3D left? Would no. our experience be different than theirs the, as far as our abilities to? When, when you are in, when you're moving to the next level, the fifth dimensional, it'll, it'll feel like the same world because everything will be on the fifth dimensional density. Uh, even if you think about other, other uh, beings that are coming in the sixth, eighth, and, th and this work is way beyond fifth as well. Uh, it goes to much, much higher levels um, in dimensions. But <clears throat> if you really think about it, people are in the sixth or eighth density as, as beings, when they live their life, it doesn't feel weird because it's just their life. Every, everything is on the same vibration. Uh, same as for us, we, you, you can knock on this wood, you'll be able to, to live in that world. It, uh, so that's not going to change. What changes is 
what you are, uh, the way you operate. For me, it's like it's like you know, I like to, to give the example of like moving from like Windows 7 to Windows 10. You know, like so suddenly there's no glitches, <coughs> suddenly there's no more much of other stuff. You are completely operating at a different level. For me personally, uh, what I felt um, in the past few months that was uh, very unique, again, especially after the past few upgrades, is operating completely without fear. Mm -hmm. And that is something very unique, very hard to describe what is to be without fear, without any concerns, without worries, without uh, 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 any type of like, oh, this might happen, this might, none of that. It's just out of your operating brain. It's, so the change is not only on the level of uh, consciousness or the way you think of things or no, positive thinking in that way. It's simply a different way of op operating. You are just simply operating on a whole different level within yourself. It's just the way you are perceiving the world and yourself. It's just on a different level. It makes sense. My wife passed away in, uh, a couple of years ago, and about six months ago, I was between sleeping and waking in one of those states. Yes, it's a good place. She came, she came to me. Oh, yes. It's just like, it's just as real as, as I was talking to anybody. And she came over and she said, are you scared? I said, no, I'm not scared. And she came over and kissed me, and it was just as real a kiss as you, it was just as real as anything. Yeah. And, and she was laughing, and I said, I said, I've got so much to ask you. I said, what's it like to cross over? And she said, she just laughed, and she said, it's just like going to the other room. She said, it's not going yeah, yeah. on. I said, well, do you know what's been going on since you left? I said, the heart has been. She said, yes, we watch you just like you watch TV. And I said, won't you stay a little longer? And she started smiling. She said, I just, I'm just much better now. And she just went right through the wall. Beautiful. Well, they, they are obviously operating at a different level. It's not exactly the fifth dimensional. Uh, when you are in the, in the spirit form, you, you are in, in a different yeah, density. Yeah, you refer to it, but I yeah. was thinking all the time. That's, yeah. that's the world maybe we're going to if we choose to. Right, right. And what, I, what I heard is that if, if people actually really think about it, um, the world was so much denser even 100 years ago. So people in the early 1900s, were also, I heard it's kind of they barely would see us because we are already vibrating at a much higher frequency. In the same way, that, uh, no, uh, people who are past, they vibrate at a much higher rate, so we, we see them very lightly. But in that stage that you're in, between waking, wakefulness and sleep, you are, that is open and available to you, and you can see them and interact with them much easier. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's not exactly the same. We're not gonna be in the same level as someone who's completely um, uh, detached from this three-dimensional world like someone who has passed. It's slightly different. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is we're already in a fourth density planet and we just don't realize it yet because we're unwilling to let go of this third dimensional illusion but we've already shifted into the fourth dimension and that's why time is become, becoming a lot more nonlinear and it's moving faster is because consciousness is moving faster through space now because we're evolving. It doesn't just feel like it, it really is moving faster. Yeah. So it really is. So it's not like, it's not you. <laughs> yeah. uh, any other questions? Yeah. Speaking of time, what would you say in regards to losing time? Like, I mean, like uh, uh, missing time? Missing time, yes. Yeah. Um, well, that has many things. And I, I, can, I can answer that because I, I work with a lot of people who um, experience either uh, moving to a different dimensions or, or moving consciously to other places, uh, working with uh, extraterrestrials, and, and at that point they, they, they just uh, halt your experience on, on this level. Uh, there's, there's many explanations for that. Uh, I do a lot of hypnosis uh, of, that, kind of, of that type. You can, if you'd like to, we can, we can ex you can explore what, what happened in that missing time. Uh, but what's actually occurring is because we're shifting into a fifth dimensional consciousness, we're living in these now moments. So a lot of times that missing time yes, is because we're going from now moment to now moment and it's not a linear progression. We're just, you know, we're traveling through these now moments so our awareness is just popping in and out now mm -hmm. rather than this sort of linear progression through time. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. It's interesting times to live in. Yeah. Really interesting yeah, because really weird. we are really transitioning. Everything is like, it's like everything is happening at the same time as far as like, people on different vibration, and we change our vibration uh, based on our emotion every moment too. So sometimes we feel low, so we, we are on, on a lower frequency, a uh, higher density. And, and, and it's just, everything is happening, things that in the past you would read only once in a while that happened to like unique individuals, happening to like 
the masses here now. So a lot of those experiences of, of, of distorted times, uh, moving through dimensions, it's just interesting times to live. I uh, just keep open. Yeah. Well, how do you relate this to? There's a lot of buzz out there now about DNA activation. Is it in that sense? This is yeah. activating a lot of your DNA. Yeah. A lot of the dormant strands of DNA. It does a lot of that work. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's beautiful to see that there's a lot of a lot of parts of us that are doing and are activated, and people who are doing this and feel that there it strengthens all of those things that you know psychic abilities, it strengthens all of that intuition, all that, and synchronicities, uh, all that stuff is, is heightened and awakened when you do this work. And, and that's occurring because of how I mentioned before that we're in this photon belt, so that higher vibrational energy is causing us to evolve from a carbon-based body into a crystalline based body so that's awakening our dormant DNA and that's what's also causing the evolution of our physical form. Yeah. So it's all connected. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. In the back. How long does it take to learn this technique or whatever it is that you do? Uh, well we're actually teaching a class. Um, the level one is a weekend class so you can learn it in a weekend. <laughs> yeah, at least start your path on, on Marconix uh, over the weekend with us here, and, and we can do it in Scottsdale here, here so uh, October 1st and 2nd, and uh, hopefully within a few months we'll be, able to, we'll be able to teach you level 2 as well, and you can go somewhere else, anywhere that they teach level 3. That's the originator uh, and her core, core team, they teach level 3 right now. Again, that's, and that's more like the opening of the chakras and the deeper work. Yeah. I've tried many other modalities. I've six different things and I feel like I totally failed at every one because I don't feel energy, I don't have any success from it. How could this be different? Um, well, you know, different people feel energy differently. So it's about understanding how it is that you're feeling energy. And um, it, I think, you know, within the course of learning this work, um, we lay down a foundation of how to understand how to sense energy and um, really just understanding the greater thing that's unfolding when you're doing energy work. So, you know, you might be looking for a specific type of reaction to validate that it's working, but it's always working. You know, when you're doing energy work, it's always working, but it could just be on very subtle levels and it doesn't unfold until months or even years later. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's, it's a matter of, of um, realizing that we're all uh, uh, interacting with the, with the energy differently. We're all slightly different. We have our own unique imprint, uh, you know, blueprint of, of energy. And even if it's going to upgrade, and if, I'll give an example. In some of the, the, the classes that we took, you see some people who completely are vibrating and are completely moving their body, and, and, and some people that don't at all. Uh, it doesn't mean they're not getting it. And there's some of the others like, wow, this was amazing. They, fit, they definitely felt it in some way, and some people don't. So, so it, does, it doesn't really, um, the, the, response of, the response of your body to it, or whether you sense it or not, is not the, the, the important part. The important part that the energy is run, and then you are receiving those changes within you. Most likely, you will become more sensitive to energy at that point. Right. You'll, you'll be able to sense it better. And we'll, we'll do a few exercises to get, to get you kind of going, like, okay, yeah, this is how it feels. And again, the, the frequency is so much more refined and, and higher. I think it's, it's uh, you feel that the, the infrared just comes out of people's hands. You just feel that right away. Um, the, just, the, just the heat, the amount of heat is, is, uh, is no, it's actually could be hot or cold. It's, it depends on the person. The per what, what the person needs, it could feel like either hot or cold. And sometimes it changes even in, within the session. It's really interesting. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. OK, this is a funny one. Um, but I read somewhere online that you might gain weight during the ascension because you need more body fat. It, it, that it happens. It's not necessary. So Good. just, I don't yeah, yeah it's, 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 don't think I'm going to accept it. Keep trim. It's like, no, it's not that. Um, but um, it actually can go either way. Some people feel like they don't need to eat at all, that it just goes up here to not eating much. And some people would like to have open their appetite to a kind of voracious appetite suddenly. Uh, to be stuff that they haven't even eaten for a while. And, uh, I know, we know like one of the, one of the teachers, the main teachers, uh, is a, a, a vegetarian. She's like, oh, and suddenly she works up in the morning, especially, in, and she's like, eats a whole bunch of bacon and sausages. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly vegetarian, that one. Uh, so, 
But it's like it's kind of a how do they call it like bean eating like or yeah well because you know what's happening is everyone's body reacts differently so some people are gonna like eat a lot because you're processing such high vibrational energy that like your body just needs it to sort of go through all these changes. But then other people, like, they're shedding so much density and so much karmic weight that they just, like, lose all this weight. But I think eventually, <laughs> even the ones that are gaining weight, once yeah. their body is calibrated to the changes that are going on, then you start to shed all that density, all that weight. And the important part about this, and this is a little higher level uh, lecture about this, but it's, it's you, you also are, again, as, as you become, again, the thinning of the veil, you also are becoming a lot more aligned with your uh, divine will with what's in your highest good, you just become a lot more aligned with it on, on, your, on your regular daily daily life. So uh, you are becoming more aware of what you eat, you're becoming more uh, conscious of what you are going to intake uh, into your body. So again, you, you start choosing lighter and lighter foods. And again, you go through like a, a, a bit of a process, but uh, the end result is you will become more, more conscious being overall in all ways. So uh, uh, I think that's really um, what, uh, even if the road is going to be a little, little bumpy sometimes, but <coughs> overall this is where you're going to. So it's, it's, it's always going to be better. Think about it, the fifth dimensional uh, uh, version of yourself is always a better version of who you are at, at the moment. It is just a better version of yourself in, in all aspects. Do you find that um, doing things that are what is termed unhealthy, you know, sugar, alcohol and those kind of things that they're having a greater impact uh, as you're raising your vibration it yeah it seems like the impact yes you're more sensitive to it yeah, yeah. yes caffeine and all that stuff oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like i'm doing decaf i have to my my biggest love was ca uh, coffee and, and for me to let go of coffee was like but i just got very clear guidance like you want to hold higher vibrations you got to cut back so they told me to stop just coming back from that. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you heard of Ticino? Ticino, no. It's um, a more, it's like barley and chicory. And it's oh, yeah, like kind a of coffee. a substance. Yeah, it's like a coffee substitute, but I mean, a, a of one. the ones I've tried, it's pretty good. And you can get it online. But so. it's, it's, a, it's a matter of like moving and shifting away from this thing and slowly kind of just reducing and tapering it down until you feel, and suddenly you drink once and like, whoa, it feels different in your body because you're used to not having it. And I, I can tell you, I used to love wine almost every like with, with my dinner, very nice and nice and moderate. Maybe even that, I started to like yeah. just it just doesn't feel right. And and, and this clear guy that said that yeah, alcohol is just uh, it 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 um, it distorts your um, literally distorts your energy. Yeah. Um, it actually short circuits your energy. Um, drinking, oh sorry, not um, the the coffee short circuits your energy. Um, it just creates kind of a, like uh, short circuits and, and the the. the the alcohol just distorts your entire energy body. Um, so it, it really is something to start refraining from more and more. Yeah. I mean, I think the greatest lesson is that when you start to evolve your consciousness, you become aware of the messages that your body's giving you. So um, I think that's the most important thing is to be able to listen to your body and listen to you know, what it wants, because sometimes it might want sugar and that's what it needs in that moment. And if you can do that without having any judgment around it, then your body knows exactly what to do with that. So it's about cultivating this deeper relationship with the messages that are coming from your body and moving away from the judgment of, you know, all these things, sugar, caffeine, all that stuff. Because when you start to do that, you'll find that, oh, hey, you know, sugar isn't that good for me or caffeine isn't that good. But, you know, you want to get yeah. to a place where you can listen to your body's messages and respond. And so, you know, if it's asking for a Big Mac one day, it, it needs it for some reason, and it knows what to do with it to bring your body back in balance. So it's about cultivating that self-awareness. Yeah, and being more, more in tuned to, uh, to your body. And, and when you do that, you, you'll just become more sensitive overall um, to, to, uh, to those elements that are not good for you, and you'll, you'll feel like, okay, that day I took it, and I just didn't feel good. It just didn't feel as, uh, as light as it should be, so we just you naturally start refraining from it. So. Any more questions about Marconics or the Ascension? Yes, please. Can you demonstrate anything? We're going to do a booth. Yeah, we have a booth out there and we're doing free healing demos all day. So, so everybody should uh, swing by for five minutes of, of healing and just enjoy it and you can feel it, okay? okay. Um, yeah. And again, we, we are uh, going to have a class coming up in Scottsdale uh, in October 1st, 2nd.
two weeks from, t from uh, today. Um, really would love to have more, so, and we're bringing this message out to, to Arizona. Um, it's, it's, a, it's again, a very new energy modality that's only been around for you know, three, four years. But it is very, very uh, high frequency, and we love it, and we definitely uh, uh, understand it. And we took the, the leap forward in taking the action, becoming teachers in it, and would love to share it <coughs> with everybody. Uh, so, would love it to see you guys in the workshop and, and really uh, explain it, uh, and really feeling it and experiencing it more fully. Obviously, you can come to us in, in uh, also private sessions for the re specific recalibrations, and you can have it also during the weekend and, and more. Did you have a question? Uh, it's kind of a question and uh, comment as well. Uh, related to uh, the population as a, as a whole and, and raising consciousness uh, collectively, does that, uh, in your opinion, does that help s or explain, you know, uh, the phenomena like the Mandela effect to sort of uh, gaining as a population new perspective? Uh, Releasing, you know, uh, the, the blocking conditions of, of the, you know, the lower dimensions. Right. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a, a, a lapse or a changing of time. It's more of a, a, a different approach of, of perspective. Yeah. A yeah. new learning approach. Absolutely. It's just it's it's a shift in consciousness. And if you think about it, Every time there was something, a, a progression in human history, it always came from a level of consciousness, of grassroots work, that, that, that society suddenly changed their minds about something and moved forward. It's like, no, this is actually not okay to do, have slaves anymore, or, or human, uh, uh, human rights and all that kind of stuff. So suddenly there's a shift in consciousness um, and, and understanding that this is no longer, uh, we need to change, change the way we are. It always comes from, from um, from masses, from, from things, a deeper understanding that is suddenly awakened uh, within us, and the Mandela effect is definitely that effect of like the awakening of a conscious, of a slightly higher level of consciousness to, to the masses. Is it almost like a recognition of our cognitive dissonance uh, as a right. population, uh, as a whole, right. uh, lifting up together and yeah. to realize that? And we can see it now that the, the extremes in, in, uh, in, the, in the, just the political spectrum is just kind of a, a a very, the, the, the high level of contrast we see now is, is just uh, reflective of that, of no, no, just higher level of consciousness and old, old consciousness. Um, it's just kind of uh, uh, epitomized to, to, for us to kind of observe and, and just see that it's just, wow, it's amazing. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely noticeable I mean, in almost every area of, of society. And you know, like, with this work, you kind of become an anchor of light in this world, and then just through entrainment alone, like your vibrations affecting the entire Earth grid, so it's affecting the entirety of society. So you becoming an anchor for this higher vibrational energy is changing the world. Yeah, yeah. It's changing the level of consciousness around you uh, and around the world itself. And again, there's this ripple effects that, that again, the, the more people who are, are uh, have shifted their, their, their level of frequency to higher levels, um, the, the higher your magnitude of light, pretty much, the, the, the higher your, your light, and, and the more you are affecting the environment. And just being in your presence gives you that, like uh, uh, people are shifting. So it's, it's a beautiful service. And again, it goes back to that point we made, it's like you by holding your own space and being at the highest frequency you can hold, you are affecting your environment. Whether they're aware of it or not, it doesn't matter. You are doing that service for, for humanity, for the world, for the ascension. So it's uh, it, it, it kind of even touches on the 100 mon monkey theory, where like, mm -hmm. you know, enough people raise their vibration, that'll cause the ripple effect that will cause the entirety of um, the collective consciousness to change. So that's why, you know, each one of us can take this step in <coughs> raising our own vibration. And, you know, because we're all holographically connected, it's going to change the holographic pattern of, of uh, the collective consciousness, and then you know cause this mass change that we're starting to see already happening. Yeah, we're in the midst of it, so it's, it's not like something that's happening in the future. We have to, again, it's the process of it. It's a process that we already are in, in, in the midst of. So it's just really being becoming more aware of it and be, taking that that uh, personal uh, understanding of it and becoming that uh, light source. 
always. Anything else? Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be fun. So, so stop at our booth. We're going to be there in about five minutes and just swing by. And, and uh, if, you, if you have any other personal questions, we can answer there or, and have a demo. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.